it's Liz from No Trace, and today I'm going to teach you how to sew using a sewing machine. And we are going to make a super simple and super cute napkin. So let's get started. The supplies that you're going to need for this sewing tutorial, just a few basic things. So of course you're going to need fabric. And in this Learn to Sew tutorial, we're going to be making a very simple napkin. So a cotton fabric works great for that. This is a lightweight cotton that you can get at any fabric store. You could also use old sheets and cut them up and use those for your fabric. You're gonna need some thread. So you might wanna get thread that matches your fabric that blends in, or you could use whatever thread you have on hand. I'm gonna be using a darker thread in this tutorial so that you can see what I'm doing more easily. You're gonna need a measuring tape or if you happen to have a really big rotary cutting mat, which you can see in the background here, that works too. You're also gonna need some scissors, and I recommend having scissors that you only use for fabric because paper tends to dull the blades really quickly. So if you want to set up your own sewing kit for future projects, I would get a pair of scissors and only use them for fabric. If you have some of these small scissors, these work really great for trimming little threads off your projects. You definitely don't need to have one of these, but it comes in handy. And then you're gonna need something to mark your fabric. So either a pen or this is Taylor's chalk that you can get um, at your fabric store, but really any pen or pencil that will show up on your fabric will work for this. You're gonna need some pins. You're gonna need an iron, any kind of iron will do, and somewhere to iron, so either your ironing board or like some thick towels to protect your surface will work. And then lastly, I would recommend a ruler. This is a quilting ruler, but any kind of ruler will work for this project, and that'll help you get nice straight lines for cutting. So in addition to the supplies, you're obviously also going to need your sewing machine. And any kind of machine that you have is great. If you're looking to buy a machine, one feature I will point out that's been really helpful for me is that this machine has speed control. So it lets you slow down or speed up how quickly you sew. So that's a nice feature if you are just learning or if you want to show your kids how to sew, but it's absolutely not something you need. Any machine will work great. I'm gonna show you just the basic parts of every sewing machine. So obviously there's a power button, usually it's on the side somewhere. You'll wanna make sure that your machine is turned on. Um, one of the second most important parts to know about is the presser foot. This moves up and down with a lever that's in the back. And when you're sewing, your presser foot always needs to be in the down position. And when you're threading the needle, your presser foot should always be in the up position when you're first setting up your machine. Just reach around and find that lever so you can move your presser foot up and down. Another important part to, of your machine is the top bobbin up here where you put your large spool of thread. And near the top bobbin on machines, there's going to be a spot to wind up your bottom bobbin. So in the bottom part of your machine is a smaller spool of thread that you wind up in the same color as your main spool of thread. So all machines should have some kind of short little post that allows you to put a small bobbin on there. And usually you would start with an empty one. And then there'll be some kind of instructions or guides on your machine to show you how to get from this major spool onto this top bobbin. So this machine has a little path drawn out on the top. And there's usually at least one or two spots that the thread will go around so that the thread has good tension on this bottom bobbin. So once you have your bottom bobbin loaded up with thread, and you'll either do that, accomplish that by pushing the foot pedal, which is down on the floor. So this is the foot pedal, it's down by your feet. You'll load up your bottom bobbin by either pushing on your foot pedal 
Or like this machine has a little feature where you move this lever forward and that winds the thread around your bottom bobbin. So the bottom bobbin goes into this space um, under the presser foot. It's a special area. They call this like the throat plate. And this is often called the hook cover that goes over your bottom bobbin. So you remove that and you want to make sure that you're putting the thread into the bottom bobbin in a way that's going to maximize the tension. So I'm going to put it in and follow this little arrow. So put it into the slot, follow this arrow and go around like that. And then my machine has a little spot where you cut it, but, but your machine will have some indication of where to put the thread. Often it'll just be a little slit in this area where you put your thread. So if I were to put the bobbin in going this way, the thread would come off really easily with not as much tension. So the thread is gonna go in this way and it's gonna increase the tension of my bobbin of my bottom thread. So you want to put it in that way and then um, replace the hook cover. So that's how you get your bottom bobbin in place. And now I'm going to show you how to get your top spool in place. So make sure that your presser foot is in the up position and take this thread and this machine has an indicator path. So number one is the first spot. It's gonna go around this metal plate to give a little extra tension. And then it goes around, and I'm following this number two. It's gonna go down, following a number three, number four, come back up. And then every machine has this kind of a hook up near the top of your machine. So you want to put your thread into that hook and back down again. Okay, so although your machine will probably look different than this, there's always going to be a spot for your top spool of thread. Often there'll be some kind of plate or something here to put the thread around. And then you'll bring it back down, up, through this little metal hook, back down again, and then into the area where you're gonna thread the needle. And I'm gonna show you that now. Okay, so to thread your needle, it's gone around and through that hook, and now it's sticking out down here. There's usually gonna be a metal plate or a metal wire or something real close to your needle, right above your needle. So you want your thread to go behind that piece of metal wire, or in this case, it's like a metal hook. So it goes behind that and then it goes from the front of the needle out to the back, okay? So you can either thread it by hand through that hole. You can use a needle threader. This machine has an automatic threader. So I just follow the numbers on my machine and it threads the needle for me, which is really nice, but you can thread it by hand. The key thing is you go from the front out to the back. And then you put your top thread under your presser foot and your bottom bobbin thread, if it comes out, if you see it, it's going to also go under your presser foot. So the two threads will be out here. On this machine, the bottom bobbin thread is kind of hidden down in there so you don't always see it. But basically both your threads will be under the presser foot before you start sewing. Okay, the last part of the machine that I want to point out to you has to do with the type of stitch and the length of the stitch. So most machines, the default setting is a straight stitch. And on this machine, it's set to stitch number one, which is a straight stitch. You can see it here on this button, one is just a straight line. So that's what you wanna work with is a straight line stitch. And then this knob controls the length of the stitches. So if I want my stitches to be really far apart or stretched out as much as possible, I can increase the length. And if I do nothing, the machine will have some kind of a default setting. So this machine, the default setting is a pretty narrow stitch, 2.4 millimeters, I believe it's in millimeters. So that those are the other two things. Make sure that your machine is in your straight stitch position 
and that the stitch length is, you know, set to something maybe between two and three is a good spot to be in. Before we sew the actual napkin, I'm gonna, I recommend that you practice stitching with your machine on a small piece of fabric. So you could cut a strip or a square off of your fabric or just use some other scrap that you might have lying around. And just practice sewing on your machine so that you start to feel comfortable with it. And one other button I forgot to point out is your reverse button. So there should be some way for you to stitch backwards. On this machine, it's a little arrow, like a U-turn arrow, but every machine should have a way for you to stitch backwards. We're gonna make sure the presser foot is down. And whenever you start sewing, you'll wanna go forward a few stitches and then reverse a few stitches. So to go forward a few stitches, just gently press on the foot pedal using your foot and then pause and push your reverse button to, to go back over those same stitches and then go forward from there. And usually the faster you push on your foot pedal, the faster you sew. Now, whenever you get to the end of a line of stitches, when you're done sewing something, you want to use your reverse button again and then go forward. And that really locks in the stitches. And then lift your presser foot and pull your piece off your machine. And then a lot of machines will have some kind of a cutter or a blade to trim your threads. And then you can just practice doing a straight line as many times as you need to before you move on to the napkin. So once you're comfortable using your sewing machine, now you're ready to sew up your napkin. But first we need to cut our fabric and get it ready. So a lot of napkins measure about 17 or 18 inches by 17 or 18 inches, so they're basically a square. But you can make a napkin any size that you want. So if you want your napkin to be 18 inches by 18 inches, you need to add extra um, length and width for the hems. We're gonna make this a 16 by 16 napkin. So that means that we're gonna cut the fabric 18 inches by 18 inches. Now, in order to do that, you will wanna find a straight edge of your fabric. If your fabric has a selvage edge, this part where the brand is printed on it, that should be straight. So you can use that as sort of your guidepost when you take your measurements. So I'm folding my fabric in half because it's just easier to work with that way. And then I'm gonna lay it flat on my work surface or on your floor, wherever you have room for a piece of fabric. And then I can use this rotary mat, but if you don't have one of these, you can use your tape measure and mark off 18 inches. So here is 18 inches. Now use your chalk or your pen and just make a little line at 18 and then move your tape measure up and then again make some little marks here at 18 inches and then I'm going to move it up once more and I'm always making sure that that end is flush with the edge of the fabric and measuring 18 inches. Now this is where you want to get your ruler and line it up with those marks that you just made and make a straight line all across your fabric. So now I've made a mark about where 18 inches is. 
So now I'm going to take my scissors and cut this part off. And I'm cutting through two layers of fabric that are folded very neatly together. And set that aside. Okay, so now we want to make sure that it's 18 inches going this way as well. So I'm going to fold it like this to make it a little easier to work with. And now my selvage edge is down on the bottom. So I'm going to do my best to find a straight edge here. And that looks pretty lined up. And again, I'm going to try to find a nice lined up edge on this side as well. Okay. And then again, I'm going to take the tape measure and mark 18 inches. And this Move it over a little bit. This fabric is just over 18 inches on this side. So I'm going to make some marks at 18. Move my tape measure up. Make some marks at 18. Move it up again. And mark at 18. Okay. And now take my ruler and connect all the marks that I made into a nice straight line using my pen. And now I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to follow the line and cut this fabric so that it's going to be 18 by 18 inches. Set that aside. Okay, so now we have our fabric cut to size. Now you can cut off the selvage edge before you take your measurements, but since we're doing a pretty good hem all the way around, this selvage edge will be hidden when our napkin is finished, so I'm just leaving it there. If your selvage edge is a lot bigger, a lot wider than this, or if you did a smaller hem, than we're gonna do, then you would wanna cut this off before you took your measurements. Now that your fabric has been cut for your napkin, the next thing we're gonna do is press the whole thing. And actually, if you want, you could press before you cut it as well, but we're gonna give the whole thing a good press. So I've ironed the whole thing. And next, what we're gonna do is fold over, we're gonna turn our fabric uh, wrong side up and we're going to fold over the edge about a half of an inch and then we'll take it to the iron and press it and we're going to do that for all four sides fold it over half of an inch and press it now that I've folded and pressed with the iron all four edges about a half of an inch you're going to do the same thing again, fold over another half of an inch on all four sides, take it to your iron and press again. So now I've folded all four edges a second time, about a half of an inch and press that in place. And this way, when you use your napkin and you wash your napkin, the raw edge is totally hidden. It's not going to come unraveled and threads won't start to show. So after all four sides are folded over, a half an inch and then a half an inch again, take your pins and put a few pins in your fabric to hold that nice hem in place. So I'll probably put about three pins on each side to really hold that hem down for when I take it to the machine. Now that there's pins along all four sides, we're ready to take our napkin over to the machine and sew all along the edges to really hold that hem down in place. So I tend to pick a spot maybe near a corner to start my stitches. 
I'm going to put the presser foot down and I'm going to increase my stitch length to three millimeters. So if you want to, you can make your stitch length a little bit longer or you can just leave your stitch length, whatever the machine setting is at. And then we're just going to gently, you know, carefully follow along this line all the way around the napkin and, and I'll show you how to do the corners too. And when you get to a pin, you might want to take it out before you sew over it and put it away so that it doesn't roll around in your, in your room. Now when you get to a corner, what you're going to do is you're going to stitch all the way towards the very edge of the fabric and then back up a little bit and start going that way. Okay, so I've gotten near the edge. Now I'm gonna reverse. And this is where you're gonna pivot your fabric. So lift up your presser foot. Your needle, before you do that, your needle is down in your fabric because if you lift up your presser foot when the needle is up, your fabric will move around and you'll lose your, your nice line of stitches. So the needle's down in the fabric, lift the presser foot up, turn your napkin around, lower your presser foot, always remember to lower it, and we're gonna actually go backwards a few stitches to get the corner nice and secure. And then we just go straight down the line again. And as we get near a needle, take out that needle. Actually, it's a pin, not a needle. So take out that pin. You can sew over your pins, just a little safer to take them out. So I usually take them out before I get there. So now again, as we get near the corner, Take your time and get close to the edge without going off. Then back up. Lift your presser foot, making sure the needle is down in the fabric. Lift the presser foot, turn your napkin, lower your presser foot, and then go back just a couple stitches. And then forward again. So take your time and get close to the edge. Back up. Make sure your needle's down. Lift the presser foot, turn your napkin, and lower the presser foot. Now, if you wanted to, you could just go to this corner and, and keep going, as opposed to what I did, which was created a little extra reinforcement there. So that is up to you. I like to do that so that this little flap of fabric is nice and secure, but you could just go to the corner and turn without doing any of this extra reinforcement there. But I recommend that, especially if your thread blends in, it won't be as noticeable, that little extra detail. But it doesn't look that bad. I think it's kind of cute. Okay, so we've turned our fabric. Now we go back a couple stitches to really reinforce that corner and then forward again. Removing our pins before we sew them. And you want to use your hand to help guide that fabric as you sew. So when I teach kids, I always say keep one hand up on the fat on the this side and then keep one hand down low holding your fabric. So your right hand is holding your fabric down here, your left hand is guiding the fabric under the presser foot in a straight line and then your foot is powering the machine forward. Okay, take your pin out. Going towards the corner, getting close to the end. Reverse a couple 
Make sure the needle's down, lift the presser foot, turn your fabric, lower your presser foot, and then back up a couple stitches, and then go forward. And now we're gonna meet up with our first line of stitches here. So make sure you head towards that line to create a nice straight connection. And we're gonna go over them a few stitches and then we're gonna back up a few stitches. And then I'm gonna go forward just a couple more and that really locks the stitches in place. Now lift your needle, lift your presser foot, pull your napkin off your machine, and then you can cut your threads. And then you are just about done with your napkin. Now the last step is to trim your loose thread. So this is where these small scissors really come in handy, but you could use your big ones too. And just as close to the fabric as you can, just cut those extra threads off. And now turn your napkin over and get the threads on the other side and just trim those. And since we back stitched over the stitching here, these should really be locked in place. So it should be fine to just cut them right off. After you've trimmed all the loose threads on your napkin, you're done. And this is the kind of project that you could do for your home or to give as super simple gifts to your loved ones, little cloth reusable napkins. You know, you could try out contrasting threads with different fabrics to make that line of stitches really pop. Or again, if you wanna just sort of hide that, you can get some thread that matches perfectly with your fabric. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the No Trace channel. I have a lot of other tutorials on there, how to sew sandwich bags, drawstring bag, and even some stuff on making your own beeswax wraps. Thanks so much for tuning in, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.